introduce vertical integration. Vertical integration represents one of the three paths that a firm may use to expand its corporate scope, as shown in this graph. This involves expanding along the value chain. If we are to picture what a value chain looks like, these are the, generally the key stages in a firm's value chain moving a product from raw materials all the way to finished goods. If we are dealing with the supply aspects or the earlier aspects of production, we tend to refer to that as upstream. Whereas, as we move towards the relationship and the retail aspect, we refer to that as downstream. Vertical integration refers to the ownership and control over multiple stages of the value chain. In order to own and control those stages, we must incur costs to own and manage them. These costs must be weighed against the benefits. Vertical integration essentially represents the opposite of outsourcing. In backward integration, the firm essentially becomes its own supplier by producing its own inputs and or components. This backward or upstream integration thus becomes the firm expanding further and further left on the previous graph. Forward integration refers to the firm becoming its own distributor or retailer. And here, forward integration refers to the ownership and control of distribution and retail. This is also referred to as downstream integration. In recent years, the trend has occurred is that firms are more and more likely to not backward integrate, but instead tr transition to more forward integration. This allows them to have a closer connection to the customers, provide better products and services, and differentiate themselves, but it also gives them some better knowledge of the customer and control that relationship. The basis of the vertical integration decision rests on transaction cost theory. Essentially, if I am transacting with either a supplier or a retail on the market, I form a contract to manage that relationship or exchange. However, all contracts have some element of being incomplete because we can't always define the contingencies that may occur. Such contingencies and changes provide the opportunity for firms to behave opportunistically and take advantage of the other side in an exchange. Transaction costs are the costs incurred when conducting exchange in the market. These may include the actual monetary costs, but as well as things like monitoring and efforts such as legal, legal negotiations and compliance costs as well. Basically, transaction cost theory specifies two conditions that when they occur together may increase transaction costs and lead to the need for a firm to vertically integrate. In terms of uncertainty, the incomplete con contracts may be exacerbated or the problems with those contracts may be exacerbated when there is uncertainty in the exchange relationship, again providing more opportunities for the, the abuse of bargaining power. Uncertainty may be due to changes in demand or volatility in demand, possible changes in technology in the production of a good or service, and or changes in the market prices of inputs. Anytime we have volatility or uncertainty around these areas, it opens the door for an incomplete co contract to become a problem. When we cannot futurely, uh, cannot accurately forecast the future, relate, the future state, any of these contracts becomes a problem and may require renegotiation. Each renegotiation opens the door for additional transaction costs as the firm has to protect itself from being taken advantage of. In addition to uncertainty, there is the problem of asset specificity. Asset specificity re refers to when a supplier in this exchange relationship has to invest in assets that are specialized to the firm it is supplying. This increases the supplier's bargaining power because the, the supplier can then use this investment to hold up the to create holdup where they may stop producing or hold the firm hostage because they refuse to provide the good or service that is needed unless they renegotiate. This then creates additional bargaining power for the supplier, possibly necessitating vertical integration. Thus, in the presence of transaction costs, the vertical integ integration decision essentially involves comparing the administrative costs of ownership or vertical integration versus the transaction costs of purchasing the good or service in the environment. And essentially, this is the make or buy decision. 
what are the costs to make it myself versus the cost to have someone else do this for me or outsource. It's important to note that the costs are not just monetary costs. They may include other costs, such as governance costs, and non-monetary costs as well, such as the aspects of control and quality over quality and scheduling, and also effort and time spent by managers that may not be quantified directly. If the cost of administrative, if the administrative costs of ownership are less than the transaction costs of purchasing, the firm should vertically integrate. If the cost of purchasing purchasing it from outside firms is cheaper, then the firm should not vertically integrate and should continue to use the exchange relationship with the outside party. In future videos, we'll now get delve more deeply into the benefits and costs of vertical integration as well as, well as other alternatives.